So now this is what's called the cell cycle. This is the classic diagram of it, makes it look like a clock face, right? And we divide this cell cycle into some confusing subdivisions. Here's the confusion. We just talked about meiosis. We're going to break down it into different stages, different parts of mitosis in just a minute. And that's going to be the main thing we talk about here. And then if we talk about this cell being formed by a mitosis event, followed by a cytokinesis event, we confusingly call that the mitotic phase of its life. Notice the use of mitosis and mitotic for the same thing, except mitotic phase includes something that we don't call mitosis. Once you lose sleep over that and get over it, right, now we can start our story. This cell's life then starts. It's only half as big as its parent cell, right? Because when one cell divides into two, its two little babies are half as big. So one thing this cell is going to do as it lives is get bigger and bigger. It's going to do that by doing transcription, translation. It's going to make lipids on its smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It's going to do a lot of stuff we talked about, but it's going to get bigger. And it's also doing whatever it does during this phase of its life that we call G1. G is for gap, right? This is the gap between when it was born and when it might divide. The gap one is only part of that phase of its life that's in between interphase when it was born by mitosis and when it might divide by mitosis. We've already said a whole lot of cells don't divide by mitosis. That's not how they end their life, like your skin cells we talked about, right? But for right now, we're going with this cell cycle, assuming that this cell right here that was just born from another cell doing mitosis and cytokinesis is itself going to do mitosis and cytokinesis. Well, if that's going to happen at some point in time, this cell gets a message, and that message is usually chemicals. A bunch of chemicals build up. We're not going to go into that detail, right? But they say, hey, you know what? We need more of you. So it's time for you to do the first thing we need for you to do before you can have babies, and that is copy your DNA. And so during that part of your life, which we're going to call S for synthesis, you do replication. This is when replication happens with all that stuff we talked about. Then once all your chromosomes, which used to be single-stranded, right, are now double-stranded, You've copied them all. The copies are stuck together at this point. You're going to continue to do some stuff to get ready for mitosis. You're going to make things like microtubules, which we'll get to in a second, just as a specific example. You're going to continue to do some chemistry that gets you ready for mitosis. And when you're ready for that, then you might start the, the mitosis separating those chromatids, identical into two identical chromosomes so that eventually when you pinch yourself in half each of the two cells that you give rise to has the exact same number of chromosomes notice here pretty common pretty common test question that this overall called interphase overall meaning it has its own subdivision phases g1 s and g2 interphase lasts a long time compared to the mitosis and cytokinesis phases time-wise okay here we see visually if you can't see chromosomes in a nucleus then you call this interphase okay the site of chromosomes means we're in mitosis ah now we can see some chromosomes just barely we can see some chromosomes we can't tell that they're x-shaped we can't tell but we can see some little noodle like things there this must be in the beginning of the phases, which therefore is called prophase. We also very clearly see a bunch of microtubules forming, which again have been stained yellow by some fluorescent molecules in this actual micrograph. Now we see, ah, much more clearly, these chromosomes have been coiling up tighter and tighter, shorter and shorter, thicker and thicker, much easier to see. This is prophase, but it's later in prophase than the earlier picture we just looked at, right? And obviously, we've had here a separation. 
of two clumps of these microtubules. And what's in the middle of that clump is that thing called a centrosome. That's just an area. And if this is an animal cell, there's very likely a centriole in there. If it's a plant cell, not as likely to be a centriole in there. That was a slight difference between plant and animal cells. We may or may not have said before, and we're going to say it now. Um, it's not exclusive. Um, there are exceptions, but that's a basic idea here. So now, we use this word for this. We've used it before, and it means the same thing. We have two things separated, right? Sometimes it was an atom that we said had some positive areas and negative areas. That was the polarity we've talked about so far. Now, these two centrosomes going to opposite sides of the cell, we now use the term pole to describe those areas. They define the poles. Here's what's going to happen next. I'll draw it when it's on here. These chromosomes are also on their way to lining up right down the middle. The middle of what? As defined by the poles on our globe. What do we call the middle? In between where the poles are, the equator. We're going to call it that also here. So now, in that phase that's called meta for middle, because they're lined up down the middle, these chromosomes, right? I'm going to remind you that they're double-stranded at this point. So I'll kind of do that in there, right? They are lined up down the middle, and they are actually being lined up by microtubules, which are attached to them from either side, actually. Each X-shaped chromosome has a microtubule attached from either side. They have actually pushed them to the middle, and soon they are going to be what pulls apart those two identical strands. Okay? This kind of football-shaped structure formed by all these microtubules going back and forth, these, this is called the spindle, right? Because in Rumpelstiltskin, that story, what's a spindle? This is a sewing machine, and a spindle is what holds the thread up here. And the thread around the spindle would look kind of like this. And this is what reminded some of those early microscopists of this bunch of stringy things that's kind of like oval shaped. And that's what they called it, a spindle. So these microtubules attached to these chromosomes are called then spindle fibers for that reason. They are microtubules that are going to pull apart these chromosomes. Okay, so now they're starting to pull them apart. You can clearly see them being pulled apart. They're going to get pulled apart further and further, right? They're being pulled towards each pole. And because of how they lined up and how it works, each of these double-stranded chromosomes, two identical copies, one's going to get pulled this way, one's going to get pulled that way. And so we're going to end up with a clump of identical single-stranded chromosomes going one way toward one pole and one going toward the other pole the other way. This is called anaphase. Ana is a, a Greek, I think, word means separate. So now, um, anaphase continues. They continue to get pulled further and further. Here, we are calling this the end phase, Greek, tello for end, right? In telophase, um, we have reached as far as they're going to get pulled. And then there's another event here that, if this is an animal cell like this is, makes this easy to recognize that this is telophase, right? And that is that this cell has started to pinch in right at the equator where the chromosomes had lined up before. Now it's the microfilaments, the little red things that are going to pull all things together and pinch this together in the middle. If you see that happening, then traditionally we say this is telophase. So that makes it easy to see in an animal cell to differentiate telophase from anaphase. Because if this cell is in late anaphase, you got a clump of chromosomes over here, you got a clump over here, just like you do here, right? And if that's all you see with the centrosomes and microtubules, you would call this anaphase. But since you see this pinching in here, right, you would now call this telophase. 